singer named Justin Moore. We don't do a whole lot of bullshitting up here. We just get up here and play country music. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome into the Justin Moore Podcast. It's good to be back live with you this week. We uh, took a week off last week. We had, uh, was it Memorial Day? Is that why we took Memorial off? Day, There's yes. Some things going on. Oh, yeah. I forget what what was going on, but uh, we, uh, we're happy to be back with you with a brand new episode. We're going to have a good time today. We told you guys a couple of weeks ago that uh, we've been working on some awesome guests, and we got one today we're going to chat with here just in a minute with uh, Jaron from the Cadillac 3. Uh, great guy, yes. great talent. Look forward to catching up with him. Uh, but before we do, uh, say hey to the handler, JR. What's up, buddy? Hey, brother. I'm good, buddy. Yes, excited about having Jaron on. I mean, what a guy. We talk, uh, He's been requested, uh, the Cadillac 3, they've talked about them a thousand different stuff on social media and things people say in them, so I'm glad we got him on. When it came to Southern Rock, they talk, They brought him up, you know, obviously, when they're always in that discussion because they we know they rock. Um, I was actually just talking to somebody the other day about um, I had the last time, and we, you and I talked about it on the podcast too. We, the last show show we went to was to see them at the Rev Room in Little Rock in 19. Um, we all went out and took the bus and went out and, and saw them that night and actually saw Morgan Wade That's open true. for them, which uh, somebody requested her to come on, which she's she's rocking right now. Uh, she's the one that Cowboy and I walked in to see where we were going and we're like, who is this? She was amazing, but now she's rocking. But anyway, TC3, uh, with that and also with Jaron, as you know, and we've talked about him on here and all, half the guests we've had, he's a prolific songwriter in his own right. I mean, he's he's in producer and everything else. So there's uh, I'm excited about this. There's no telling where this might go. And um, yeah, ties up a bunch of loose ends and, and looking forward to it but yeah last week had to take a little time off get our ducks in a row had some shows you know we were out in Colorado uh two weeks ago Colorado Springs that was good got a little uh got a little bad weather but uh it held off enough for us to get it in hate Chris uh, Jansen had to get his set cut short but you know is what it is when you do outside shows but uh it's good and then last week uh, Evansville and Murfreesboro good shows glad to be back on the road it's good good feeling to get back to a little normalcy yeah, for sure. For and speaking sure. and speaking of non normalcy, here comes the here comes the rock and roll side of country music. Mr. Ah. Jaron Johnston. What's up, Kim folk? <laughs> Having a noon beer, bro. How are you guys doing? Why not, my brother? <laughs> What's up, wild man? Man, you know, I'm uh I'm in downtown Nashville and just got in and we're le- actually you know what? You I heard you talking a little bit. We're starting back up tomorrow. We have little they're loading the trailer tonight and Heading out tomorrow to Iowa, so it's crazy, right? Yeah. Are y'all? Nice. I so saw some your... pictures y'all put up. Are y'all in the studio doing rehearsals and stuff for for the tour right now? Yeah, yeah. We've been in a, a room over there in Nashville that uh, it's you know we kind of had it for about two weeks just rehearsing, and then we've been recording a little bit, kind of you know trying to get our feet wet again because we literally when that when the when the stuff hit the fan we we shut down. I moved to Florida and. It was just no go, you know. So we haven't yeah. really touched anything since the beginning of it. We did a couple of live streams, but that's about it. So it's weird, man. Yeah. So but, this is literally the first time you're back on stage. Yeah. I don't even know how to be that dude anymore. Wow. wow. I'm confused. I'm up there. I'm going like, <laughs> did I used to dance like this? Is this- <laughs> yeah. yeah. Jared, I, dude, I'll tell you, it, it's we've done – we we did a little more than you guys. We did like a drive-in thing here and there, and a, you know some different type deals, acoustic thing, distanced, and um. But the first time we actually went on stage, stage and did it like in a grandiose fashion, if you will. Yeah. I had the same thoughts, man. I'm going, damn, that's a lot of lyrics, and you sing like I do. I'm like, that's a lot of lyrics, and I don't remember the set. Where do I play guitar? Where do I not play guitar? Like, and I did this one move here. I forget exactly how I did that. And, but I tell you what, man, not to sound like artsy fartsy, and I've said this in interviews. It really proved to me the first time we were back on stage when it just clicked and everything was fine. And I didn't think about what I did. I just did it, just naturally. It really kind of proved to me that how magical i I guess that's the right word music is man it's just unreal and it kind of reminded me in a different type of way of um that 
and I'm getting out there a little bit, but that Glenn Campbell special they did when he had Alzheimer's and could still play guitar like like Glenn Campbell. Yeah. And it, it, there's something about music that it, for it it's up there in the brain somewhere. It never goes away or something. I, I And you can only probably have these conversations between artists and band members, I would think. Totally. I tell you, man, what wasn't magical was that first rehearsal back. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was rough, bro. I mean, well, we, that's a different ball game. The, the yeah. fans ain't there exactly, and you're just like, I mean, I was, I felt like I was constantly letting Neil and Kelby down because, like, they would be like, you know, Neil's playing pretty good, and Kelby's playing the lap still, and I'm like, yeah, <laughs> all right. <laughs> <laughs> Insert lyric. <laughs> okay let's run it again (laughs) i mean because i didn't oh my i didn't listen to a damn thing while we were off you know what i mean i just come back in there thinking it's going to be there and it's it wasn't (laughs) hey did you write a ton during the time off or no i did man i wrote pretty much every day on zoom and then uh i mean it was so interesting because you had like a lot of the you know country star x or whatever were so accessible because they didn't have to leave their house in Georgia or where, you know what I mean? So you could literally get piped right in. And I mean, we were writing with artists every day almost. I mean, hell, I was writing with Florida Georgia line and they were right around the corner from me in Florida. <laughs> he lives around the corner, but we're still on zoom. Right. It was, it was where's your place in Florida? Grayton. It's on. Okay. 30 there. You're, you're at Destin, right? Yeah, we're in Destin. We're actually going down in a couple of weeks. And, you know, I've got little ones who were in school for a lot of this. So we couldn't just, I know a lot of, just to be candid, a lot of people in our industry have places down in the panhandle of of Florida. And I think 90% of of artists move down there or industry people move down there. And we didn't just simply because our kids had to be in school. Yeah. Um, but I, I was envious of you guys, but we're actually going down in a couple of weeks. We spend the summer down there uh, for the most part. And so uh, if you find yourself down there and off the road, we'll have to hook up. Yeah. I uh, got like, what, 20, 25 minutes from each other? Yeah. And it's so funny. I'd be, I'd be out having a beer in my front yard with my kid or whatever in the driveway. And Jansen and Kelly would drive by. I'd be, hey. And he'd sit there and talk for a minute. Right. Luke. Hey, Luke, you know, uh, yeah, Charles right. Kelly, Charles Kelly drive by. I mean, everybody, you still see everybody. It's a trip down there, man. You Nashville got, South. Yeah, it's like yeah, Nashville got, South. Yeah. So, hey, um, I know you got a right today. Uh, what? How much time you got? I got time. I don't even have a watch. I'm, I'm actually zooming on my phone because I can't get on the, I don't know what the <laughs> Wi-Fi is here. I got about 10 minutes, man. You good? If that's all right okay yeah, cool whatever man yeah we uh we just so just so you know we we started this podcast when this all hit mm-hmm. um just to try to i suck at social media so yeah you are pretty bad yeah <laughs> i am i'm telling you i'm 37 but i'm actually 73 yeah true um <laughs> but but anyway uh so we just kind of started this just to have something to do, you know, and try to stay as connected as possible. Because the only thing long form that we get to do as artists and bands is play on stage. So I thought, well, maybe this will be another thing I can do. And um, it's been a lot of fun. So, we, dude, we've had – we hadn't even talked about it, but we've had athletes. Uh, hell, we had Ma- Matthew McConaughey recently, which don't ask me how right. that happened. But a um, bunch of favorite, artists, man. buddies. He's like my idol. I'm reading his book just, right now. Dude, it's killer, right? Green light. Yeah, I mean, some of the stories you can't make that shit up. I know, right? And then the audio book, the audio book's killer too, because it's him telling the story. Oh, dude, like I'm like I'm actually reading. You know, I'm listening to that. Oh yeah, totally, totally, totally. Well, I didn't know. I didn't know how much yeah. time you had on your hands. Yeah, they yeah, he was killer. Read. Yeah, he was cool as shit, man. I remember one time I we were talking about the same thing you were talking about, how you can do all this, you know, because he he had a book release that he did in the middle of the pandemic, so he had to do all his press remote and hit justin was talking about new album yeah doing that remote which i want to get on a little bit because you guys had two albums last year i want to talk about that for sure for a sec um um and the uh, purple fairy tale i love that jam uh so uh (laughs) you know i do uh but we were talking the same thing and he because he was saying that you know he could do it from everywhere and it was easier and i said yeah i don't even have shoes on right now he just goes who knew 
Yeah. Who knew? And I was like, <laughs> he didn't have to say much. That's all he had to say. That was the coolest fucking thing he could have ever said. You know, who knew? You know, I, so. I tried to write a song the other day with somebody, and uh, I, you know, that the thing that he made so famous, the uh, all right, all right, all right, you know, that kind yeah. of thing. And I was like, we got about halfway into it, and I was like, guys, we should call this. There's no way that's not copywritten. You know, I mean, there's no, yeah, <laughs> no way we're not gonna. Oh get yeah. It. And so we we bailed on it. We bailed. On it. Oh yeah, he's got he's wow. got a lawyer for each. All right. You know, I'm sure. You know what I mean? Yeah, buddy. So, but he, he was so cool, though, and he's a fan of country music. Hell, he probably wouldn't even care. No. Yeah. And, you know, and like but, Justin said, too, and, you know, besides doing the shows, the only other thing we do is after the shows, drink on the bus and either hang out with other bands that are on the road with us or at the show or call each other at 2 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. So we thought, well, we can't do that because we're not, none of us are staying up till 2 o'clock in the morning, which is a whole other thing that was weird last year, you know. Okay. Uh, but so we decided, yeah, we'll just call them on this and record it and send it out and, you know, give the fans a little inside peek on it and give us a chance to have it documented too. So one day when we are 73, like Justin is now, we can look back and say, hey, I remember we did all that, you know, because who knows if we'll remember. I don't remember, hell, 10 years ago. I don't know what I'll remember in 20 more. Yeah, it's getting uh, hey, foggy up there. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, speaking of uh, being on the bus and stuff, JR just reminded me, and I didn't remember this, the last show that we actually went to, not a, not our own, uh, was when y'all were in Little Rock. Oh, yeah. And we came, brought the bus, hung out. and uh, Yeah. That, that seems funny. like a decade ago, man. I feel like that was in 1987. Yeah, true. Yeah, it's crazy. And I tell I you, mean, it I, feels like forever. I remember, um, I remember, yeah, because we hooked up. You got us back there, parked by you guys. It was awesome. Appreciate the hospo, and um, yeah. And then uh, Morgan Wade was opening for you guys, and yeah. man, she has been crushing it lately. And I've actually had people mention her on uh, suggestions because you guys, TC Three, has been the most requested band by far on the Justin Moore podcast. When people use the hashtag Justin Moore podcast on social media, um, and you know, I've told them, I was like, oh, it's happening. That's a, that's a no brainer. It's going to happen. We just got to line it all up, you know. So, um, so that was cool. And yeah, that was the last show. We we were at she opened for you guys you guys killed then that was kind of the end of 19 then we go into 20 we do a handful of shows and then the world stops yeah i mean it's, it's that, that seems like you're right it does seem so long ago because that year was a really long year you know <laughs> yeah mean, mm -hmm. if you look at yeah i mean it kind of the parts of it if you look back on it it's uh it, it seems like it flew by but it didn't when we were in the moment there and you're you're in a vicious mm -hmm. cycle of wake up do this eat go to bed wake up and you take away the the show aspect and everything that we've been doing for the last 20 years that's a long damn year man that was crazy yeah, yeah no doubt yeah. and i remember well, and i and you and i've talked about it before and uh it would it'd be cool a little something for for everybody listening out there and i'm wearing in honor of the tc3 i remember the first time i met you guys and under a different name opening uh -huh. for said zz top out at the fontanelle when i used to live out in white's creek probably golly had to have been 10 11 years ago 12 yeah. years ago and uh i remember going backstage or walking through backstage talking to somebody and i saw a couple of you guys i don't remember who it was but i remember telling you guys i was like you guys are freaking awesome and if you ever need a road manager i live right down the road <laughs> and i never got to call but i'm glad we're buddies now but i remember that from that time on i remember because i'm obviously a huge top fan you guys slayed and then fast forward to uh 2019 last show i saw you guys play y'all slayed again so that, that was a fun show that it's so funny man the top thing because it's our 10-year anniversary right now like our it was actually this past week as a band and um that was our first show as the cadillac black which turned into the cadillac three uh, right but um yeah man we didn't have a pot to piss in otherwise we would have got, gotten you to be our road manager <laughs> we yeah, I, hey what a great first show are you kidding me <laughs> yeah our is weird we didn't have anything planned and we billy put us on that show and then after our show he comes up to me and said hey what are y'all doing this summer i said i don't know man we don't have anything really and he goes, cool. You want to come out with uh, us and Skinner? And I said, yes, sir. And next thing you know, our booking agent, Jay Williams, over there got a damn call the next morning, and we were on the ZZ Top Leonard Skinner tour for the whole summer. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. That's kind of like that you. kind of reminds me of, of us. Yeah. yeah. My first tour was Hank Jr. Skinner, Rowdy Friends tour. I remember that. Didn't have a single, didn't have a single out, nothing. And I don't know what the hell we were doing out there, but I remember that. Uh, you were trying my hair, that tour my hair was about as long as yours. Yeah. Uh, 
Uh, but anyway, those legend, uh, those ga- ga- game recognizes game. All those game old legends recognize yeah, you, cats. I, I met you right around then, Justin. We just over, and you and me went and got a beer at um, I think it was called Spanky McGee's or something like that in Green Hills. It was a. Uh, it seemed like I remember that name or something. It was something like that. I, I don't know if that maybe that's what it's called now. But we got into a, a friendly argument about what the best Skinner song was, and I said Swamp Music. And you said, I don't remember what you said. What did you say? Do you remember? <laughs> what, what? Probably, uh, probably write it in a song if I had to. Maybe. Um, if I had to guess, knowing me. Or, I, you know, back then I might have said Sweet Home Alabama. <laughs> well, that was a long time ago. <laughs> I don't remember what it was, but you were really serious about it. I remember that. I remember thinking, man, this guy might hit me if I don't agree with him. <laughs> <laughs> never, never. You're too, you're too too sweet but hey uh jr mentioned i know you you got you actually got to work today we don't uh but um uh, jr mentioned that that you guys were the most one of the most requested uh, guests um to come on here and so we've been meaning to get y'all on and yeah and we're gonna get we're gonna get all yeah i want to get kelby ray you, and you guys are good too, at some we point. want yeah, man. We want to get you guys. We want to get all three of you guys on here and do a whole long one, maybe in the evening when we can have a few cocktails and have some fun, uh, spend an hour together or more. Love it. Um, yeah. But the reason why I wanted to get you on uh, real quick uh, this week is because you just sent me a text the other day. Um, I was actually coming home off the road. That was our first weekend back. Uh, coming home off the road and. Uh, Tennessee and Arkansas were playing in the SEC championship game of the SEC tournament, and and Jaron's like, "This is some bullshit," because <laughs> uh, I, I guess we were up at the time or whatever, and we ended up winning the game. But uh, and I was like, "Dude, I didn't even realize you were a, a Tennessee fan," and yep. um, and so I said, "Man, with uh, both of our teams advancing this past weekend to the super regionals and a chance to to go to the College World Series." uh here uh if we can both hopefully win our series this weekend yeah. upcoming uh i figure we get you on and and um see what do you feel about uh the vols chances of getting past lsu and well we've and, already, uh, we've already heading, heading to the college world series we i mean we wore them out the first round thing i think so i mean that's always kind of a jinx and scary to me when you have such good games with a team, then you have to go back up against them. Um, I've just never seen, you know, UT have a, a baseball program. I think a lot of it is to do with, you know, Tony. And thank you guys for him, by the way. That was really sweet. Yeah, I told him. I I told uh, Jer, uh, Jr. I told Jaren. I go, hell, we gave you a coach. What else you want from us? He gave us a like, batting coach. <laughs> so like, okay, we'll take. Hey, we, hey, hell, we give everybody the SEC football coaches. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but I mean, I think we're gonna do pretty good. I, you know, uh, against y'all the next round, I, I, that's a nerve wracking. Who do you guys have in the super region? We have North Carolina State. North Carolina State, that's right. But see, y'all had a much y'all had a much uh, easier time in the regional than we did. We we played Nebraska, and I mean, we were in a do or die game last night, and we could have been put out as the number one overall seed. But they were really good. But we just have not been playing well. And I'll tell you this, and not because you're our guest right now, or I'm talking to you. Of all the teams we've played this year, uh, Tennessee. I'm not gonna say scares me the most, but they scare me the most. They're like, good because y'all, y'all, y'all are really talented. But y'all are, we kind of have a really gritty team, and they'll fight you, uh, right. even if they're down in the eighth inning or whatever. And y'all have the same type of team, uh, up and down one through nine in the lineup, and and you know we've we've lucked out and you know the series we played with you guys in knoxville i think they were all three one run games we ended up winning the series two to two to one yeah but it could have been the other way around y'all could have swept us we could have swept y'all that game in the sec championship was tight i do not want to see y'all in the finals of the college world series i can promise you especially with the tony vitello dave van horn little rift and yeah I, I don't I, I just don't want to I don't want to see it I would love to know like I didn't really see, I saw them kind of uh kind of biting at each other and then you could tell it was getting a little aggressive and I was like 
Oh, this is interesting. I'll, I'll, I'll call you after we're off of uh, uh, a recording device, and I'll tell you what that's about. Okay, cool. I knew that it's pretty off, funny. I knew there's some off the field stuff, but I will say if yeah. Evan, if Evan Russell um, and Drew uh, on our you know on our hitting side, if they come out like they did um, with LSU the first time around, I think. I mean, I think, I think Evan had three like three home runs in the uh, over that first lsu series um and gilbert with the grand slam he's caught he's hitting good i mean i don't know i think we're gonna we're, we're doing pretty good it should be good i keep seeing on the yeah, other screen i tell you go ahead go ahead i'm sorry i'm just saying i keep watching the instagram thing for because it's hard for me to watch every game because i got a four-year-old and we're back and all this stuff and writing and whatnot but i'll watch the feeds and it's like oh ut wins again i'm like yeah and then i'll go watch the highlights you know what i mean so it's it's pretty fun right. i tell you who uh if i could choose one player on y'all's team to to take off of it if we have to play y'all again and maybe put on our team is y'all's leadoff batter spence mm -hmm. you can't get the dude out yeah i mean just you can't get him out well he's the leadoff uh, he's not him he's the classic I'm, perfect leadoff batter yeah he, he really is man and so anyway man I know you got to get out of here. We just want to catch up with you real quick and say to the fans out there listening and watching, we're going to have the whole crew on at some point. I'll get with you yeah. and see what makes sense for you guys. Maybe after y'all are out for a, a week or two and we can see how it's going uh, out there on the road, we'd love to catch up with all of you and yes. and uh, have a few cocktails together and yeah, buddy. spend an hour or so together, something like that. But, dude, great to see you. you too, great bro. to talk to you. Hey, uh, you best of luck to your balls upcoming and um, – and best of luck uh, this this coming weekend with the uh, getting back on stage. Hopefully, it's like riding a bike, brother. We'll figure it out. <laughs> hey, hey, Jaron, before I get you out of here, I, I got I got one little quick thing I want to do with you before we get out of here. And uh, definitely tell Kelby Ray and Neil we said hello, and I want to do yeah. that for sure because I also want to get you back on talk songwriting, maybe even get Stover or one of the other cats on and y'all talk about some songwriting because they people have hit you up about that on here too. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, oh, one thing I want to do real quick before we got out of here, we do each week we do our guest birthday, what the number one song in country music was on their on the day they were born. So, like, say for me, I was born 9 11 79. It was Conway Twitty, I May Never Get to Heaven. Justin's 3 30 84. It's Alabama Roll On 18 Wheeler. Wow. So, you're a 10 4 80, which is awesome, too. You're 10 4. 10 4. That's pretty cool. 10 4. 10 4. 80. 80 is a cool number, too. That's why I'm 79. I think that's a cool number. Uh, so, 10 4 80. Do either one of you guys want to take a stab at what the number one song in country music was on that day? Is it Ronnie Millsap? Ooh, that's close. It's in the vein. Um, think of what that would have been, man, you know, because that obviously it's a it's a uh, it's a two initials and love them everyone. T.G. Shepard, close. Do you want to get to? Do you want to go to heaven? T.G. Shepard. Wow, my dad ah. played for T.G. Shepard. That's crazy. Wow. He probably, so That's he's cool. played the song that was playing the number one song in the country when you were born. That is so wild, man. That's interesting. That's a that's a good like trivia thing. Because I bet yeah. a lot of songwriters know that shit. You know what I mean? Like country songwriters. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. Depends on which, which, which area you get for sure. But anyway, appreciate you, brother. Appreciate your time. Tell the boys we said hello. We'll see you next time. All right. Thanks, guys. Peace out. All right, buddy. Right ahead. Yeah. Sweet. That was cool. Yeah, hey, real quick, uh, brief conversation with Jerry in there. And like I said, we just wanted to get him on because uh, he and I were just texting back and forth, giving each other some crap about baseball. And and um, so I wanted to say hey to him real quick and also kind of tease you guys and let you know that we're working with them and getting ready to uh, have them on for a full podcast. They're the type, though, like I mentioned, Jr. We've, we've been recording these in the morning. Right. Uh, that's why he's going to a writing session right now. And um, and honestly, it's for us so that we're as professional as we can possibly be. <laughs> but that might be one with those guys that we need to just blow it all out, act like fools, oh, yeah. have way too many to drink, me pass out yeah. under my desk. Oh, yeah. Uh, me uh, blindfold and, me with with uh, with uh, yeah, dental floss. Dental floss, yeah. yeah. So, but that that'll be a lot of fun. We'll, we're going to get those guys on soon. But uh, we thought you guys may enjoy hearing from him and about his vols, and they're getting back on the road. So we want to let you know that as well. Absolutely. So, uh, look look for their tour dates. TC three, and again, thanks for Jaron coming on. He's a great dude. And, He's just a fun hang. Oh yeah. And, 
And um, I wanted to get into so, their albums from last year because I've listened to them since, you know, when they drop and all. And I went back and was listening the last couple of days since I knew Jaron was going to come on for a few minutes with us today. Um, but yeah, y'all go back and check out Country Fuzz. They put out early. 2020 and oh, then later great great record and then later on that year they put kind of a spacey kind of cool different type almost in the vein of a zz top modern record uh tabasco and sweet tea um which is which is is a cool title you know it's hot like tabasco sweet like sweet tea kind of thing um but there's a there's there's some cool there's that's a really cool record too so uh i i highly recommend everyone uh, if you want to rock out this week go download those two uh tc3 um, albums that came out in 2020, uh, Country Fuzz and Tabasco and Sweet Tea, no doubt. Um, yeah, for, for sure. But and, yeah, and we obviously, obviously, we knew that this was going to be a quick conversation with uh, with Jaron because he had stuff going on. But uh, again, we wanted to uh, let you guys know because you've been requesting TC3, we're going to have them on for a long one. Yeah, um, like we do everybody else. But I, I wanted to get his perspective on the baseball because he and I were just giving each other a bunch of crap about it. And, um, and have, I mean, having fun with it, obviously, but, uh, I thought it'd be fun to have a, a quick little, uh, guest right now, especially with uh, what's going on with, with, uh, our teams and baseball and all that good stuff, but yeah, that uh, was good great. to talk to him and good to talk to him and, and, uh, hopefully he'll write a hit song today and we'll have those guys on the next few, few episodes. And yeah. uh, again, it may be one of those really entertaining ones where we, uh, we have a, a few too many. Yeah. And, you know, you and I talked about it this past weekend. We were on the road and some over the last two weeks we've been kind of back kind of on the road sort of um, that, you know, as the podcast goes and the year goes with our changing schedule and the guest schedule, like you just alluded to with us being able to it's easy to get everybody on a Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday during the pandemic at, you know, <laughs> noon or one or two whenever they're available because everybody's schedule was not like it's going to be here in a month or two so um which yeah, is he, awesome he kind of alluded to that with songwriting yeah I mean. even with that yeah so um yeah for sure um which i love it jared's like yep shit hit the fan i went to florida <laughs> i was like yeah i don't blame you there buddy uh, i did the same thing uh which uh but yes yeah, that's so, a difference in one kid and four kids yeah right there. there you go right right um so and, and well, and too, Kate's got the store back home. You got, I mean, y'all got a lot of stuff yeah. going on in y'all's yeah, community too. You know what I mean? Um, so, but with that being said, going back to doing the podcast and being on the road, we're going to have this thing's going to change. There's going to be some of these um, in the future where we're going to do them at night or do them on the bus on the road on the weekend and then put them out the next week or. Um, may have to, you know, if I if, if say we're on a show one week and there's two or three acts at the at the venue that day that and everybody has time and we have set up, we get two or three. We may have to release those separately as of it over the few weeks. Maybe one week we're we've got shows all week we can't get a podcast in. We may save something and put it back out. So y'all just be looking for um, things like that as it comes up. Uh, y'all are going to adapt and grow with the podcast because uh, with changing circumstances and our tour schedule and home schedules and travel schedules uh we're just gonna have to roll and do it you know whatever we can do to keep it going but we want to keep it going for sure yeah that's a that's a really good point jr i didn't think about but <clears throat> you guys be prepared for uh, maybe episodes where we have you know shorter guest segments when we're together which i think it'll be a lot more fun when we're actually sitting with each other on the bus or whatever um, but maybe we play a, a show where there's three artists with us and we get them all together for 45 minutes or we do like we just did with Jared and we have 20 minutes with each of them or something like that. Yeah. So it, it, it may change a little bit, but I think it's going to be a little more fun and it's definitely going to be more spontaneous. So, um, you know, like last week we were out and played a show with Chris Jansen, which you kind of mentioned earlier. You hated that his uh, set got cut short because of weather. Obviously, we both do. Um, you just can't you can't con you can't control Mother Nature, unfortunately. No. Uh, especially this time of year, when you play outdoor shows, you're kind of at the mercy. No, of, it, I mean of, it hailed uh, that day. Not kinda, you're at the mercy. I mean, when you were trying to take the girls to the zoo yeah, and all, so I mean, it was had, wild stuff that day. I mean. That was more than just a little rain yeah, and a little light. Yeah, had we not, yeah, had we not had that type of situation with the weather, we would have grabbed Jansen, even though he's been a guest on this podcast before. We would have grabbed Jansen, 
and could have sat down with him for 30 minutes and catch up with him yeah because when we had him it was over a year ago but uh point and even being, had his kids I were with him, so we could we could have got the kids on too yeah yeah and so anyway uh i agree with your point that uh hang in there with us uh and i not only hang in there with us i think get excited about the fact that we're going to have the opportunity to talk to a lot of people that the other thing is talk to a lot of people we don't know yeah i mean because we've just been texting and calling buddies for the last yeah. 16 months yeah I mean, you know and and so um i think it'll be a lot of fun for sure yeah, and 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 uh, and yeah, we are because I've even had some recently, like um, working working trying to. Uh, I know we've got Carly Pierce coming up in a few weeks, and um, I actually, um, it was funny enough how things work. I had uh, William Lee Golden from the Oak Ridge Boys, the the iconic beard in the Oak Ridge Boys. He's from Bruton, Alabama, which is about two hours north of where I live. And, you know, we've met them a few times. They're a hoot. I mean, we've told that story on them. Dwayne, put some pants on. <laughs> you know, they're they're a hoot. And uh, I, he's got a new book coming out. So um, I saw uh, one of the publicists had sent me, an, you know, an email they sent out to everyone just saying what, what new, when their artists have new things happening. And I saw that. And I, so I replied back because it's a publicist we're friends with and was like, hey, would love to get one of those uh, signed to me if I'll pay for it, whatever. I'd love to get one, you know, made to me if, if he if he doesn't mind or if that's even an option. And um, I'd love to read it and then talk about it on the podcast. And hey, would love to get him or the guys on the podcast at some point. He hit me back. He said, "Cool, I'll check the podcast out. I'll circle back, send you a <laughs> book, no problem." Well, then fast forward, we go on the road this weekend, um, and Sunday morning as I'm getting up, getting ready to leave the bus to go back home, driving my truck from Nashville back to Gulf Shores. Uh, I hear a knock on the door say, and head pops in and say, hey, is this your truck? I was like, oh, sorry, I got you blocked in. So I had the bus beside us blocked in. Well, I come around the corner and there's a, a huge beard and it looked just like William Lee Golden from the Oak Ridge Boys. And I did a double take. Well, it turns out it was Craig Golden, William Lee Golden's son, Craig. So we chit-chatted for Oh gosh, probably an hour we talked and uh, and and caught up. And I told him then I said it's funny I just emailed a publicist about talking to your dad on our podcast at some point. He said, "Oh man, yeah, I'm sure he'd love to. He's he, he's a you know character this and that." And um, we went on to talk about his brother and his gospel career and the Grammys he's won and very cool, interesting family, you know. So um, so then I got Craig's number. He got my number. We we had a great talk and then um, he said, "Yeah, I'll hit you. I'll get put you in touch with one of Dad's people." Then sure enough, this morning as I get up, I get an email back from the same publicist. Said, yeah, when do you want William Lee on? So that being said, awesome. at some point we've got William Lee Golden from the Oak Ridge Boys going to come on and talk to us, uh, the beard and all. So uh, and we ha and we've met him, you know. I Hat shade, beard and all. Oh. And I told Craig when I met him at uh, at the bus lot the other morning that one of my highlights of of my musical journeys was you and I on the Oak Ridge Boys bus singing Elvira with them. I mean, I said, does it get any better that that you know growing up watching that on all the shows and everything all your life, and then getting to sing it with them on their bus? I mean, you know. Also told him too, it was neat because this past weekend. Um, our buddy Chris Fortune, son of legendary uh, Statler brother member Jimmy Fortune. Jimmy. Uh, yep. Uh, Chris, brother man. He hell yeah. He came out and helped us because Tanner, uh, our tour, our tour assistant tour manager and merchandise manager, had to go up to South Dakota to his brother's uh, um, military graduation. From uh, his, Tanner said it was. Uh, he said he didn't understand any of the lingo, but it, apparently it was very important. But anyway, so he had to take off. So Chris. Filled in for Tanner, so I told I went to I went to bed talking to a fortune, and I woke up talking to a golden. I said I felt like I was on the Gaither Good Time Hour or something, you know. Uh, but it, <laughs> but it was very cool. So point point being that, like you said, we're gonna have some cool new guests on that we don't even know yet, uh, and we may do it at some different times. We may do it on the bus. We may do it in person at venues, backstage at a festival. Who knows? So stay tuned. Yeah, uh, I mean, you know. The thing is, a lot of these festivals, we'll, we'll show up, these all-day festivals, and we don't even know who's on the ticket with us. And you go, oh, my gosh, it's so-and-so. Yeah. And we can jump, we can run out and, and grab them and maybe for 15, 20 minutes or whatever. So, yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. So stay tuned, uh, upcoming for, for that for sure, because uh, I think there's going to be a lot more surprises for people in the near future 
uh, on the Justin Moore podcast. So, yep. uh, Jr., why don't we take a quick break and Good idea. Um, come back and we'll uh, talk about some um, some college baseball, which is hot and heavy right now. Maybe some NBA playoffs. Um, and just whatever else we have to BS about. Yeah, well, yeah, well, we got some shows coming up. We got two. We got a couple of big months of touring coming up. Uh, we got all kinds of fun stuff. So yeah, let's take a quick break. Pause for the call. Station identification break, and then uh, we'll come back. We'll chop it up for a minute, and then uh, we'll uh, let everybody get on with their week. But uh, thanks again to Jaron Johnston from the Cadillac Three for jumping on with us uh, today, and thank you guys for listening to the Justin Moore Podcast and using that hashtag Justin Moore Podcast on all social media. Uh, interactions you use with us and on my website and on Justin's website I've been able to find them I've got a ton of new good q and I'm stacking up for a, for a future episode we'll do on that I got some good feedback people seem to enjoy the Q&A and some shout outs and stuff so I'm gonna try to get some of that stuff together too um, so but until then y'all hang in there with us for just a minute while we take this quick break pause for the call station identification break and we'll be right back here on the Justin Moore podcast Hey guys, I'm so excited to announce an awesome opportunity with one of our sponsors, Bobcat Company. Today we're announcing the Straight Out of the Country giveaway where you can enter to win one of three pieces of Bobcat equipment. They're giving away a Bobcat compact tractor, a Bobcat zero turn mower, and a Bobcat utility vehicle. The utility vehicle, also known as a UTV, is one that I've been using on my tour and I can tell you it's a great machine and one you would be so lucky to take home. To learn more about the giveaway and to submit your entry, go to bobcat.com slash country. Hey, what's up, guys? Justin Moore here. I want to remind everyone out there listening uh, that my wife, Kate, has an awesome children's clothing boutique in downtown Benton, Arkansas, at Central Arkansas. So if you're local, come see us at 119 West South Street, in downtown historic Benton, Arkansas. Uh, again, that's 119 West South Street in Benton, Arkansas. And if you're not local, we ship everywhere. So uh, you can find us at shopthislittlepiggy.com and see all that we have to offer, all that my wife Kate has to offer, I should say. Facebook, you can find us at Shop This Little Piggy AR. And Instagram, you can find us at Shop This Little Piggy AR. But check us out. It's called This Little Piggy, and uh, see what we got to offer, shopthislittlepiggy.com. Hi, y'all. This is Brandon Bing, singer, songwriter, and whiskey maker. You're tuning into the Justin Moore Podcast. Visit easyliquor.com to grab your bottle of Bangtail Whiskey and join the Blue Collar Swaller family today. Follow us on all socials at Bangtail Whiskey for more news and updates. Now pour jigger and take this a second ride with us. All right, everybody, welcome back to the Justin Moore Podcast. I'm your old buddy, old pal, J.R. The Handler, and across from the Zoom machine with me is good old J.M. himself donning some shades today because the curtains didn't come in in the studio still. And I know I've got a few few people hit me up that say they want to build you uh, <clears throat> mounts and, and or come help you hang all your deer heads. And I said, we, we got it. We got it's strategic over at the Moore household now because we can't just throw stuff up like I do in my garage slash studio. Justin's house, we got to, we got to Miss Amanda who heads the projects up for Miss Kate. Now, Mama Kate's going to have the final say-so on all of it, so it's all – and you married guys out there that you have a man cave that your wife still frequents through, you, you, know, the, you know the drill. So uh, that's part of our hang-up there. But we're getting it dialed in. Yeah, so I, just so you guys know, like my office is in the top floor of our pool house, and so we have areas – designated for deer heads and different animals i've killed and they have to be strategically placed to look right and we were getting ready to do it all before this pandemic hit us and then all of a sudden that hit us and um you know we haven't gotten it done yet yeah. but as far as my office goes like we have i just told you off the air we have everything in we just haven't had anybody to come out and do it all. And I could hang drapes and do this, but it, you just don't know my wife. Right, that's and, what I'm saying. They're going to come back moving I mean, anyway. It's, like, it's just moving it twice, uh, you know. So like, and with the I'm just and with the deer heads, wait and let them do it all. Well, even with the deer heads, had it been a regular year, me and you could have got it done as a few trips coming home. Well, you're there by yourself, 
with your kids and why? I mean, it ain't like and your ceilings yeah. are twenty foot tall. It ain't like, I mean, you couldn't really get to that. Well, it'd been it'd been well, tough to do it thing. by yourself. Point being. To hang all my heads where my mounts where I want to hang them, I would have to bring scaffolding in. Right. Because it's like 20 plus foot. And I mean, it's a, it's not just hanging it on the wall behind me here. No, I, mean, I can remember, deal. I can remember hanging the one at your house in Benton. Me, you, Shaggy, uh, yeah. a couple of other people. I mean, that, uh, maybe Robbie and somebody, Brian, maybe I had the whole bus driving crew over there to do it. And, I mean, it was all we could do to get that one up ourselves, and the ceiling wasn't even, you know, what walls weren't that tall there. So I get it. I get it. But yeah. And, and the other thing is, like, my office in particular, like, I hate the seat that I'm in. I hate my desk. Yeah. But we got, when we got all this stuff put in this office, I wasn't planning on using it right. as much as I've had to use it. Right. So now I'm like, it looked cool before, but like, all the functionality of it is way off. And yeah. so like this looks like crap behind me. Um, you know, I've tried to make it look somewhat decent, but like, yeah, I need curtains and drapes and shades and all that. And we have all that stuff in. We just haven't put it all in. So I, we've been talking for three seasons now how I'm <laughs> going to get my office put together. And we really are much closer yeah. than we were well and i'm just faking it till i make it i just got mm. all these as D dally would say i got so many gimmicks going around i don't notice that how crappy it really yeah. is because i, I should have put i should have put uh uh drywall up behind all this stuff you know and my desk is the opposite or, or similar i don't love my desk i can barely get my knees under my desk this desk is made for a, a, a school teacher lady this is not made for the handler you know what i mean my knees barely fit i need and that's why i'm always slunched over i need a desk that's about eight inches taller than it is so i could sit up my knee you know what i mean so i get it uh and i'm in the same boat I've, i got to i've got like i said i've just got enough gimmicks going on to to use the the, the tricks of the camera but uh, but yeah we're getting it and like we said with the podcast we're everything's an evolution we're getting we're getting a little bit little everything's getting dialed in and you and you're mentioning my glasses right now so that the reason i'm putting these on because i was doing this number talking to Jaron <laughs> because I don't have blinds up right now. So if I had blinds up, I would not be wearing sunglasses indoors. Jaron does it to look cool and he actually looks cool. Yeah. I'm doing it for the actual function of it. Yeah. And they've so been, in not, I can do, I can do this if y'all want me to, but I, I don't think you want me to. So yeah. And they've been in rehearsals in the studio and in Nashville, hanging out with their buds, getting together. I'm sure they've been knocking them back at night. Staying having late. noon beers. Yeah. He's, he's probably noon beer. Yeah. There. He's probably fading a little red eye himself too, but yeah, good to catch up with him. And, and yeah, I know you mentioned before we got off the air, or you talked with Jared about it. Uh, you know, we both our our girls softball teams didn't quite get as far as we thought they were going to. We're in the middle of that right now. looks like, um, uh, Florida State and uh, is it Oklahoma? <clears throat> you know, I, I after I we got beat out, just quit. Uh, yeah. I think who made it to the uh, College World Series was Alabama, Oklahoma, Florida State, and there was a smaller school. I want to say James Madison, but that's I right. Be wrong. Well, it's Florida State and Oklahoma now because <clears throat> Florida State put out, <throat> put us out in Oklahoma and Florida State. And I believe Florida State's up one game on them as we record this on uh, on the the ninth. Well, there you go. Yeah. So, but but we hey you know so, get get we we both made it deep. You know, give us something to build on, push through for next time. Yep. Congrats to. Uh, everybody as far as they got on that. Yeah, you and, guys made it to the College World Series, and we made it to the uh, Super Regionals and got put out by Arizona. Legendary coach there. Uh, it was his last ride. And a lot of times you see that happen where a legendary coach, he's going out, even if he doesn't have the greatest team, they yeah. over um, – they rally for him one last time kind of yeah, deal. Yeah, they, they kind of overachieve. And you're actually seeing that with LSU right now in baseball to kind of relate that to baseball. They went out and won the uh, the regional uh, against Oregon, who's top 15 team in the country. Uh, and they're going to be going up against Jaron's Tennessee Volunteers in the Super Regional. And for those out there who are not super familiar with college baseball, uh if you make it to a super regional, that's equivalent to the Sweet 16 in basketball. So all the teams left now uh, are in the Sweet 16. Um, and you guys were super close, Alabama. Yeah. Uh, got beat got beat in an elimination game um, in the last 
you guys had had a chance in the last inning to tie it up or take the lead and just couldn't get it done. But uh, teams left in the College World Series in baseball. Arkansas faces off this weekend against North Carolina State, Texas Tech against Stanford, Arizona against Ole Miss, uh, Vandy against East Carolina, Tennessee at LSU, which we just talked about, uh, Virginia uh, against uh, Old Dominion, uh, Mississippi State and Notre Dame, which is kind of intriguing. Uh, Catholics versus the Cowbells. Uh, Texas against South Florida. And so um, the the winners of each of those series go to the College World Series, and that's the Elite Eight. Right. Uh, the College World Series. But that's what every team works towards in, in college baseball. And I like our chances. North Carolina State, who we play, is a really good offensive team. Um, out of the ACC, and um, we'll see what happens. Yeah. Um, and then um, hopefully I'll have a chance to go. We went to Omaha, uh, my wife and I, back in 2019 when we were there. We went two and out. But uh, over Arkansas is the number one overall seed, had a tough time in the region, but they came out of it, and hopefully that woke them up and they're ready to uh, – you know, go forward and, where are your and uh, finish are you, out the year strong. Where are your games this weekend? Fayetteville. You're going. Yep. You got the number. You got to be going, right? Well, Ella was supposed to have her district tournament, but it got canceled. Um, so there may be an opportunity for me to go at some point. Um, it's and now it's just team against team. Whoever you're matched up with is a best of three series, just like. Just like any other uh, weekend, weekend series. series. Wow! So hopefully, hopefully our guys will will, will punch us through to the uh, College World Series. I went to the College World Series for those baseball fans out there. If you haven't been, uh, like I said a couple of years ago, it was an unbelievable experience. Omaha is a great town. It's such a fun town, um, and if you love baseball, man, it's it's such a cool environment. Yeah, rent you some of those little uh, scooters and just have you the time of your life, right, Jess? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Even if you go two and out like we did that year. But, one, one out. Uh, just looking needed, forward to that. Needed one out. <sighs> yeah, well, that was the year before. Oh, okay, okay, sorry. Yeah, well, we hey, go to the College World Series so much, JR. It's oh, I hard know, to keep right? Up. I get it. I know. It. Yeah. Hey, and hopefully, and, and you know, that's like us in basketball this past year. We both went deep in basketball. We both went deep in softball. I mean, we rack yep. it up this year collectively overall for both schools. You know, we'll see how this fall turns out in football. This might be like a, if you average all of the major sports down to where we're at, I mean, we're sitting pretty. Got to be. A few, a few a more, several yeah. other SEC teams too, I'm sure. Um, but, hey, I want to say, too, uh, I, talking about the game, see, because a lot of people text me uh, Sunday night saying, Justin's got to be at this game, right? What is, is he chewing his nails again? You know, this and that. And um, I said, I don't know. I hadn't talked to him. You know, I drove all day because I didn't get home till after dark driving back from Nashville. And I'm sure I, I didn't know. I'm, no, I know when you get home on Sundays, y'all usually have a busy day. So I didn't even bother you Sunday. Um, but I said, I'm sure he, I, I'm, I'm assuming he is or, or he's definitely – He's definitely watching it somewhere. But I saw some of our buddies, uh, some some of them from Bo Mattingly's bunch, I think it was Jeffrey or Brian or one of those guys that was there, and they had a view from kind of up behind home plate, you know, kind of up watch, looking down and said that uh, it was absolutely the, the loudest and most energetic that uh, – what's the name of your field, Baum? Uh, Baum Walker. Baum Walker had ever been. They were like, been grew up here all my life. This is the most electric it's ever been when y'all finally got – won the game Sunday night, said it was just electric. Yeah, our our coach, um, Dave Van Horn, has been there 19 years, and he actually played at Arkansas. So he's had a lot of experience there. He said that's the loudest he's ever heard that stadium. Wow. So, yeah, it's – but it, it, what's weird about it, Jr. and it, it goes right along with uh, the SEC moniker, it just means more. I was watching a lot of baseball this, this past weekend, our – series of course and then others and you're talking about the ncaa tournament postseason do or die games situations and these stadiums were maybe half full we had twelve thousand every night at our yeah. park and other parks you'd have 1500 2000 really? something like it's crazy I, I don't get it so I don't know if we take our baseball more seriously. I know we do in the South, but I mean, even like I was watching an Ole Miss game and it was kind of 
I don't know, half, three quarter full, or, and I, I don't get it really. I, I don't. Yeah. Maybe we're nuts in Arkansas about baseball. I don't. I don't know. But uh, yeah, it think- was a pretty amazing environment. I had a bu- I had a buddy that was there um, when uh, the guy's name that hit the home run to kind of put the whole game to bed. His name's Charlie Welch. When Charlie Welch hit that home run, uh, I was on my couch jumping up and screaming up and down uh, to answer your, your folks' questions who who was wondering if I was there. I wasn't. Um, but he was there. He's like, dude, it was just pandemonium. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. Uh, but it, it's fun. It, it, the SEC moniker it just means more. Um, I, I, if I'm not mistaken, six of the 16 teams left are from the SEC. If wow. not – Maybe another, but I think six of the 16 are from the SEC. Wow. And, yeah, and you think right now, too, with everybody wanting to get out and do stuff, because I know all the shows we've done and stuff, just people everywhere ready to get out and do stuff. You think these ball games, especially if there's good weather, I mean, what else is there to go to a ball game with decent weather? I don't know. Maybe everybody's getting back to work. Maybe maybe everybody's busy, you know, getting back to work like we are. I don't know. That's that's Maybe. that's wild, I don't know. but yeah. But uh, congrats to you guys on that. And I look, I, I'm, I'm be pulling for y'all this weekend. And um, yeah, let me know if y'all go up there. Send us some pics to me and Cody. We'll get them on the Insta and whatnot. But um, yeah, I hope you guys pull it through. Man, that'd be awesome if y'all get get back to the top, get all the way, make up redemption yeah. for the coaches. You know, because I mean, how how long do you think Coach Van Horn's going to stay at Arkansas? How many more years do you think he's going to be around? Long I'd say he's got another 10 years oh, he's, probably. Okay. He's, he's probably uh, late 50s, maybe early oh, okay. 60s. Oh, okay, gotcha, okay. Something like that. Gotcha. Uh, which, speaking of, how long is he going to stay? I just saw that uh, Saban signed another extension to keep him <laughs> – there through 2028 what's yeah. he gonna be 90 yeah well that's what that I, I didn't know something? i've never met coach van horn i don't think i have i didn't know how old if he was that age or obviously he's a little yeah, younger no, for he's, sure he's a little younger gotcha because yeah. 19 seasons you know um but uh yeah saving i mean somebody asked me that the other week uh somebody i was talking to and i'm like i don't know i i don't think he ever will i mean look i mean he he you think back then and say in the eight. he's a different he's a different animal man well, he's a unicorn a lot of these coaches though you think back to a lot of these coaches who coach in their 70s and stuff back in the 80s and 70s in your 70s i mean it wasn't like it is now maybe it's because of better lifestyles or modern medicine or what it seems like you know even it can't be lifestyle because he eats moon pies every I day i know maybe it's just maybe it's just nature i don't know evolution or something because you know now <laughs> I mean, you know, it's Tuscaloosa, man. It's got to be. So I, I, so I'm, I'm happy about that. And who knows um, how long he'll stay and, you know, keep resigning. And uh, I, I, they always want to know who the replacement is. I said, I'm not even getting, I mean, I'm going to fight that battle when it gets here. We'll just roll with what we're doing for now. But, uh, but yeah. And then, um, and then, yeah, we got football coming up here in a couple of months. You know, it'll be, you know, September will be right around the corner and we'll be, uh, we'll be back on that mm-hmm. train too. So, uh, and, but you'd mentioned before we, we took a little break that we were, I was going to bring a little uh, NBA ba- basketball uh, update. I'll do it real quick. Cause I know I'm the only person on this list of this podcast that cares about basketball, uh, except for the few people who live in these cities. Uh, but, uh, I will say Atlanta and Philly tied up last night, one, one, uh, Joel Embiid is back. He, they don't really have an answer for him, but Trey Young can score when he wants to. Uh, Trey Brooke, freaking can Young, he ble- dude, that guy, that guy, he did. What? A, he's not six foot, I don't think. No, and and, and I remember, um, you know, he, Steph we, Curry disciple right there, buddy. Yeah, and we played them. I remember we played them. Um, I think they got us when uh, Colin Sexton, which my boy Colin Sexton will is a good NBA player and will be. He just not as you know this as quick as as uh, young but anyway yeah uh didn't didn't see him being that much of a superstar didn't really think that was gonna happen didn't see it with yeah, Steph either but the game has changed uh and then Brooklyn Arkansas Arkansas played against Oklahoma the year Trey was there and we we beat him actually yeah but I don't know how looking at him now I'm like how the world did we beat that kid yeah I, I mean, mean he'd get by anybody a, shoot from anywhere yeah he incredible yeah, no. and he and he doesn't he he shoots from like down here almost, like almost under his chin. Yeah, yeah. It, which it's, I don't. I guess it's a whole different game. Like used to, if you didn't shoot from up here above your head, it was getting thrown back down at the floor. Oh yeah, 
Well, but I mean, they're so quick and the step backs and the side steps and the, I mean, it's just incredible. It's yeah, it's, I mean, it's crazy. It, it really is. Um, you watch these guys, and then um, and then Brooklyn with their dream team, even with the hat with not even having two of their stars playing. Um, most of the nights they, they're up two games to O on Milwaukee, which Buck and I was kind of pulling for Milwaukee as you should be personally. because because he's uh, your guy from Arkansas is getting big. Portis. Portis is getting big minutes, dude. He has been. I was going to mention yep. that a few episodes ago. All throughout the playoffs, he's got to had to play big minutes. Like end of the game, he's in the game. Some of these games, he's scoring 16, 18 points. Uh, he's got he uh, he had a block shot to 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 get, push him in kind of sealed the deal on the series before this. So, yeah, he is playing huge. Um, but I just don't know if anybody's got an answer for all those weapons that Brooklyn has, especially on that side. You go across the way to the Western Conference, one of the best games I've seen in a long time was last night was uh, the Jazz and uh, the Clippers. That was a battle. Jazz got them, but what a game. I mean, back and forth. I mean, I, Charisse kept saying, why do you keep saying wow? Because, I mean, it was just like, Wow. Wow, because it, the is pa- Mitchell back? Yes, and he he had about forty five, had about thirty five in the second half. Um, Rondo playing like play. I mean, these passes he was putting it on them. And the I mean, it was some it was some real impressive ball re- block shots and defense. That's what won the game. Uh, the Jazz clamped down on defense, and um, they couldn't. Clippers couldn't get a shot off to. Wow. I mean, it was it was a great game. I just got to say that for just basketball, it was a great game. There was, you know, it wasn't really, I guess, Donovan Mitchell, but it was a team effort on both sides. It was, you know, it was good team ball. A lot of passing. I mean, pass, 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 swing, swing, shoot, rebound, kick. I mean, it was great. I'm kind of pulling for. I would love to see this happen. I don't think it's going to because I think if you're down two zero to the jet or the Nets, Nets, it's over. Yeah. But I would love to see uh, the Jazz and. <clears throat> Milwaukee. In Milwaukee, but, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but I don't think it's going to happen with Milwaukee. But another Arkansas guy, this is self-serving, that no, has ahead. played really big minutes and well, kind of came out of nowhere after getting traded from Chicago uh, for the Wizards, is Daniel Gafford. He's been oh, playing yeah. great. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so Yeah, he had some big minutes uh, too for them. Yeah, he, he played big for those guys mm-hmm. too. Um, and then and then Denver and Phoenix, um, and I'm trying to think. And now I can't. I kind of like Phoenix too. And now I've lost. I my, like their. I lost track of where I was going I like, with that because there's uh, Jermichael Green has plays for the Clippers. Jermichael Green's playing for the Clippers. Ten years in the league, Alabama guy. Always played played solid for the Tide. Really good in college, and then has stayed in the league ten years and played solid and has worked his way onto a roster where he's getting quality minutes playing in the. Um, uh, conference good final. for him. Yeah, That's conference awesome. semifinals. But anyway, yeah, Denver Phoenix. I mean, uh, Phoenix is up one. Um, Joker won the MVP. Had a damn near a triple double from the center spot the first game. Uh, but CP3 and Booker and them, they just got. I mean, they're playing. They're playing good. I would love to see Chris Paul win a championship. Uh, he's he's been so close a few times, and I just love his game. Whether you like him or you don't, I just love his game. Just a prototypical pro point guard. Yep. Knows the game, smart, high basketball IQ, can kind of do anything and everything. It'd be fun to watch him. And even though Booker went to Kentucky, uh, um, he's fun to watch, man. He's so good. Oh, yeah, he can fill it up, too. So, so that's what we got there. We'll have an update next week or so on that. Um, it's early on these series, but um, but so far so good. Um, no, we had mentioned earlier too. We were talking about the shows we had played. I know we talked about Colorado. We had some bad weather there. I wanted to mention real quick too. Then we left um, for our, our shows after that. We had this past weekend. We were in Evansville, Indiana, the Ford Center. Great show. Had a good time there. I uh, mm-hmm. want to say thanks to all the people at the venue there, Colin and Jimmy and everybody for taking care of us. Uh, had a good time there. It was good to be back in a nice big arena um, doing shows and, and a good crowd, good energy. Um, then the next night we were in Murfreesboro, Tennessee, down at Hop Springs, which was cool, man. It was It's a brewery about, I don't know, 45 minutes southeast of Nashville, um, maybe an hour. Uh, but a big, just a field party, big stage, you know, great team there working on that. I want to say shout out to Big Spring Entertainment, to Bill and Jason and Cam for uh, booking us on that show. We're going to do some more shows with them throughout the year. Excited about that. Um, and, and thanks to those guys and, every, and gals and everybody who, who worked that show that day because it was just a field party without normal facilities. But they made it work. We had a good day. 
Everything was fine. It was a little hectic getting everybody their tickets because there was no will call and wasn't really parking like we normally have and stuff. And we had a ton of guests. Um, our, our buddy Scott Stevens opened the show, and he, he, you know, first big show back around town for him since COVID too. So he had 50 people on his guest list. We had 50, 60 people on our guest list. So it was a little crazy, but it was good to see everybody. We got to see everybody from the label, George and Ashley and Palmer and Brooke and that whole bunch. And, Pete, Joey, and Cody from management, and um, got to see. Uh, for, we talked about Stover. He couldn't be there. He had something with his kids, but he, uh, his buddy Taylor Lamb, that works for Red, came and brought a uh, young uh, singer, songwriter, entertainer Noah Hicks with him, who's got a duet out with our buddy Red Akins right now. So I got to catch up with Noah. He was pretty cool. I know y'all got to, to meet after the show for a sec. Um, but yeah, just overall good to see everybody, you know, all, all, everybody we haven't seen in over a year, we normally see them here and there at different shows, but since we, our first show was close back to Nashville, we just invited everybody and it, it was good to see everybody. Yeah, we're getting there, man. Uh, uh, the band sounded great. The sound equipment there was great. Um, it feels like we're really getting back into the groove and, um excited to 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 be able to say that it's been so long since we can say that and you know we've got a a couple two or three more uh, easy weeks here uh we're gonna actually all me and you and the rest of our crew and band take a, a quick uh beach vacation yep um and then um, then we're hitting it hard, man, starting in July and look forward to getting out there. We spoke on it earlier. We're going to have an opportunity to talk to a lot of people out there on the road. Um, and, uh, man, I don't have a whole lot more. I don't know if you have any questions or comments or anything you want to touch on before we get out of here. But uh, quite honestly, I've got to leave here and go to our store to upload this video because we're recording this a day or two later than we typically do. And in order for you guys to have this on time, I've got to drive somewhere with better internet. So, uh, so we may just jump off here, here, uh, for too long, yep. unless you have something that, uh, I'm missing. No, a couple quick, couple quick things. I want do. to talk about some shows and stuff. But yeah, uh, Elon Musk, if you're listening, you can go ahead and send just that Starlink a little Starlink, early. Starlink, yeah. In that in that area, uh, we go ahead and be he can be the be the tester in that area for that. <laughs> I could use it as well because mine's still spotty with my 300 foot Cat Five running through my screen porch door. Has your song. Um, but we've got a couple of uh, radio stuff, uh, acoustic type things. I don't even know if I can mention those. I don't know if they're secret or you know they're even announced or nothing. But I, I know uh, the end of the month, June twenty fifth, uh, we're going to the Morgan County Fair in Martinsville, Indiana. So if y'all are in that area, y'all come see us over there. That should be fun. Don't know exactly who's on that show with us um, right now, but we'll have more updates on that as in the weeks to come. But that'll be a fun one. Uh, then we're going to, like you said, we're doing our 4th of July uh, breakdown of the beach. Then we're coming back July 8th. We're going to be at the Buchanan County Fair in Independence, Iowa. The next night will be July 9th uh, at the Country Concert in Fort Laramie, Ohio. You know we're all excited about that. We're getting to see our good buddy Dallas Moore that day. No doubt. Uh, Riley Green's on the show. I want to say Lori Morgan's on the show. And then uh, the legend himself, Mr. A.J. Allen Jackson. So that, that right there is a – that right there is a prime example of a day where we could maybe get two or three. Dallas Moore, Riley Green, um, yeah, Lord, maybe even AJ. Yeah, who knows? Whoever, that, that, yeah. That's a uh, Lori Morgan. Yeah, that's a prime example of a day where we could get two or three folks on and chit chat. And I think that would be just imagine if we have a podcast from that day that's got Dallas Moore, Riley Green, Lori Morgan, Alan Jackson. <laughs> yeah, I right. mean, what more could you ask for from a podcast? <laughs> right. Right, even if it's 10 minutes with each of them. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> exactly. Uh, and then uh, on July 10th, we're at the Winona Park at the World Friends Center in Bay City, Michigan. Uh, and then uh, the next weekend, we're going to do two nights, July 15th and 16th, at the Bottle and Cork in Dewey Beach, Delaware. Uh, and that's what we've got coming up, uh, starting our July run, end of this month, end of June, end of July run. So y'all make sure to go to justinmoremusic.com and uh, it'll, on the tour page, and it'll have links how you can get tickets and uh, uh, details and information to all those shows. Also go on Justin's merch page. Uh, and if for some strange reason you've been living under a rock for the past couple of months and don't, don't have straight out of the country already downloaded, go 
download straight out of the country album. Uh, you won't be disappointed. It's one of Justin's best records he's ever put out, in my opinion. I love it. Um, so y'all make sure to do that as well. Uh, only other really thing I had to say, I was going to tell uh, Jared this earlier when we were on. It was funny. You know, we mentioned a couple of weeks ago or last time we did some shows about getting locked out of the bus. Well, I had a new thing this week that was similar to that. Went to uh, go put something in one of the bays and was going to re, you know, plug something in in one of the bays and realized a dirt dauber nest growing on the plug in the bay. So <laughs> everything needs to. Let's go tell Jared all his equipment, all their bus Why stuff. Not? Go through and check everything for for bugs and, and, and cobwebs because everything's a little rusty right now. Uh, real quick on this week in country music, had three real quick ones that I thought were pretty interesting. Uh, 1977's, what, 1977, Waylon Jennings was at number one on the country album charts with Old Waylon. The album featured his signature songs with Willie, Lukenbach, Texas, as well as the Neil Diamond song, Sweet Carolina, and he does a version of Lucille. Uh, in 1979, Kenny Rogers was the number one with She Believes in Me, uh, become his biggest crossover hit in the late spring of 79, reaching number five on the pop charts. And in 1990, George Strait started a five-week run at number one on the Billboard charts with Love Without End, Amen, from his album, Living It Up. What a good, what a good couple of records there. Wow. Huh? So, wow. yep. Like Justin said. The sun finally went down, so I can take my so you, sunglasses off. So now you're not blinded but, by the light. Yeah. All right, yeah. guys. Well, we appreciate y'all tuning in each and every week here at the Justin Moore Podcast. Please remember to use that hashtag, Justin Moore Podcast, when you interact with me, JR, the handler on all social media forums, or JM at Justin Colmore on all social media platforms. Go to jrthehandler.com. I got some new t shirts in. Y'all check that out. If you want to send me a, uh, a message through there, I usually check those pretty fast. It sends me a little uh, notification, or I'll find it on the internet. If you use the hashtag Justin Moore Podcast on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, and until next week, I'm JR. He's JM. Thank y'all for tuning in. Hope y'all enjoyed our buddy Jared Johnston from TC3. And uh, we'll have another guest for you hopefully next week. And if not, same bat time, same bat channel, podcast land. We'll see y'all then. Thanks, guys. For any of you first time listeners out there, at the end of each of our episodes, uh, I like to do a little reading out of a book I've had that I've got a lot of use out of over the years. Uh, the book is by Mr. Charlie Daniels, uh, and the book is called Let's All Make the Day Count, The Everyday Wisdom of Charlie Daniels. Number 41, the least among us. Truly, I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Matthew 25, 40. I remember when I was a kid, some people who considered themselves to be good Christians, looked down on those they considered less virtuous than them. Their condescension was many times biting and acerbic and spoken without the slightest knowledge of how or why the object of their scorn had arrived at the condition they were in. He's a drunk. She's a streetwalker. That family sends their children to school in rags. How can we know what drives someone to the place of dulling the pain with alcohol? What forces a woman to look for a remedy for unrelenting loneliness? Or how does a family reach the point of poverty? Are these not the least among us? Did our Lord not tell us that whatever we did for them was like doing for him? Shouldn't we try to instead criticize? We should try to help? Should we not begin with a little kindness and understanding? Should we not realize that in the eyes of the Lord, their souls are as precious as ours? When we consider ourselves above others, we actually tend to slip several rungs down the ladder. Let's all make the day count. Difficult trials can be overcome by continuously pacing one foot in front of the other and proceeding in the proper direction. Let's all make the day count. <laughs>